It's time to change your settings immediately here in Modern Warfare 3. In this video, we're going over the new best settings to run after the recent update in order to transform your aim accuracy as well as gun skill. If you're wondering why you're missing shots, why this game is not playing the same as Modern Warfare 2 in previous years, it's because a lot of things have changed under the aim assist category, and I got you guys with some updates. If that sounds good, make sure you drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, and those post notifications. Let me know down in the comment section right now, what are your current sensitivity settings you guys are running here in Modern Warfare 3 multiplayer? Alright, as you guys can see here, I do play with an Xbox Elite controller on PC with one paddle on the back set up for jumping. If you guys are interested in picking up an Xbox Elite controller, I do have that product linked at the top of the description. If you do pick one up using my link, it does help me out. Now, you guys can also see under the button layout, I am playing on Tactical. Tactical is going to be the absolute best button layout to play on no matter what controller you guys are running with here in Modern Warfare 3. You could use a regular Xbox controller, a PS4 controller, a PS5, a SCUF, an Xbox League like myself. Tactical is still going to be the absolute best button layout, allowing you to remap your crouch and prone button so you can drop shot and get behind cover by just pressing down on the right thumbstick, which is going to help you out tremendously when staying alive. Now, this is going to be super important here in Modern Warfare 3 because the time to kill is a little bit slower. You can seriously mess up your opponent's aim accuracy and win more gunfights doing so. Now, you guys can also see under the controller settings, I have vibration turned off. Here at Modern Warfare 3, I highly recommend you guys shutting off your vibration if you are struggling with long range engagement, which I feel a lot of people do struggle with it in this game because aim assist has changed. But I do have some settings to help you guys out with that as well. Now, you do not want to have any type of stick plate. You want to have any type of controller movement, unnecessary movement that can throw you off. And vibration, for me at least, messes all that up. That's why I turn it off. Previously, I'd recommend you could turn it off, but if you like it, you can leave it on. In this game, I recommend turning it off and never turning it back on. Now, as far as dead zone settings goes, luckily here in Modern Warfare 3, they do have a system where you can fine tune your own dead zone setting. These are gonna be specific to your own controller and your controller's health. So if you have a newer controller, odds are your dead zone settings are not gonna be as extreme, but if your controller does have a lot of wear and tear, you're gonna have to adjust and compensate for that. Luckily, the system is very easy by just going ahead and selecting test dead zone and flicking your right and left thumbsticks and finding out exactly where your controller has some issues. These are very easy to set up. Luckily, again, they have a system that actually does it for you here in Modern Warfare 3. Now, under controller aiming, this is where things get incredibly important here in multiplayer and how you're gonna be able to transform your aim accuracy as well as gun skill. There's a thing called the sensitivity window. I like to call it the sensitivity window. Now, for your horizontal stick sensitivity as well as your vertical stick sensitivity, I highly recommend you playing on the four to six window and not going any higher than that. Four and six is gonna be absolutely perfect if you want to have your sensitivity fast enough to essentially turn on players and still have good movement, but slow enough that you could be accurate at longer ranges. And that's where a lot of people are gonna fall short here in Modern Warfare 3. Now, what you also want to do here to help out the aim and accuracy in this game is to reduce your ADS sensitivity in multiplayer from one to 0.65. In Modern Warfare 2, I always had it at 0.75. In Modern Warfare 3, we're gonna have to reduce it some more to 0.65 so we have as little stick play in your right thumbstick as possible so you are as accurate as possible at longer ranges. This is gonna be key if you are struggling and wondering why you're missing shots when you know you shouldn't be. If you've been having issues, you know, coming from Modern Warfare 2 to Modern Warfare 3, you felt like you were more accurate in Modern Warfare 2, and in this game, you're missing a lot of shots, I can guarantee you, you need to readjust your sensitivity window from the 4 to 6. I play on 5-5 five, five in this game, and definitely reduce your ADS sensitivity in multiplayer to 0.65 if you have it at 1, or if you already had it at 0.75. Now, what you also want to go ahead and do here is you want to adjust your aim assist response curve type. This is going to be key here in this game as well. Now, I was a huge advocate to leaving it on standard because at a moment's notice, they can go ahead and make drastic changes. 
kind of like how they did in Modern Warfare 2 during the later life cycle. But here in Modern Warfare 3, Dynamic is going to be amazing. This is essentially going to allow you to be more accurate immediately upon trying to aim at another player. And that's something that you want to keep in mind when trying to win as many gunfights as possible. Because the time to kill is slower in this Call of Duty, being accurate as quickly as possible is going to be key in helping you win those gunfights. Standard is not ideal anymore. I know a lot of people love Standard. I did as well. But here in this Call of Duty, we're going to have to make some changes. And I made a drastic change by switching to Dynamic. Now, that doesn't stop there. I also made another change by switching my aim assist type to black ops now again i was a huge advocate at leaving it alone at default because at a moment's notice they can make changes black ops is going to have a little bit stickier aim and make the game feel a little bit easier to control at longer ranges we're going to go ahead and double up on um, black ops aim assist as well as dynamic and this is going to allow you to be as accurate as possible at longer ranges when running that four to six sensitivity window in a 0.65 ADS, you are gonna drastically improve your aim accuracy and gun skill by switching these settings immediately. You're gonna notice a change immediately and that's exactly why I'm making this video because I know a lot of people are struggling with trying to take people out at longer ranges. And honestly, I was too until I made these changes. These are gonna be the settings I recommend you guys adjusting immediately here under the aiming tab category. This is gonna be incredibly important to do so. Now for gameplay here, there's some other settings that I do recommend swapping out. I have automatic tactical sprint turned on just so I can get around the map a little bit quicker. We all know that here in Modern Warfare 3, kind of movement is buffed in this game. So if you're able to win more gunfights at close range, obviously automatic tactical sprint is gonna help that out. Everything else here, I have not really made any changes to. You don't really need to make any changes in, under these settings. The only thing I would go ahead and adjust is to make sure you have automatic tactical sprint enabled just to make the game feel a bit faster and overall get around the map a little bit easier so you can win, you know, gunfights and just continue to move on. Now, under the graphics settings, there are some important things you want to adjust here if you haven't already. Now, for the field of view, I highly recommend you guys playing on the 100 to 120 FOV range. I play on 120 because I'm used to 120. I've been playing on 120 ever since they introduced the slider here into multiplayer. 120 FOV coupled with the affected ADS, not independent, do not play on independent. Affected is gonna be the best. Is gonna allow you to have as little visual recoil as possible. I understand visual recoil has been reduced here in Modern for 3, but if you want to have as little as possible if you want to be as accurate as possible let's be honest that's what we're trying to accomplish here you want to play on at least 100 with the affected ads field of view this is going to allow the game to essentially mirror your optic or your iron sight to your field of view so if you have you know a red dot you're going to see it at 100 or 120 fov as opposed to the default which is going to be key at winning longer ranges and staying on target this again is going to drastically improve your aim accuracy and gun skill as well as sensitivity settings by just making the switch immediately after making the switch you're going to notice a massive improvement and that's exactly why you need to do this immediately everything under these are going to be pretty much the same i've not made any changes these are some common sense changes you want to make or if it's not common sense you know now world motion blur you want to go ahead and turn this off weapon motion blur you want to go ahead and turn this off as well this is going to give the game just a really really weird haze It's going to make things harder to see at longer ranges make sure these are shut off if you have them turned on again these are going to be another batch of settings that are going to make a drastic improvement on your gameplay by just switching them off without having to do anything else so definitely go ahead and make sure these two are turned off and the rest of these settings here i actually have kind of changed so i have my own quality of life improvements now inverted flashbang i like to go ahead and have this turned on this is a setting that is going to be again a quality of life personal reference setting but at the same time i feel like we're all tired of getting flashbang so having the inverted flashbang is going to make things a little bit easier and you're gonna be able to at least see what's going on after you did get hit with the flashbang so i do recommend changing this you don't want to you don't have to but these are going to be the most important settings to adjust under the view category which are equally as important as the settings for the controller as well as your sensitivity now don't sleep on the audio settings they don't call me ears for nothing audio settings are incredibly important even more so important 
here in Mono for three. Now, for the audio mix, I highly recommend playing on headphones bass boost, regardless if you have a headset. Now, if you have a headset that you bought within the last five years, this is gonna be tremendously important. I have Astro A40TR headsets. I bought these back in Infinite Warfare. That was years ago, and they still work perfectly fine. You know, knock on wood, but this is gonna allow you to go ahead and hear gunfire and footsteps a lot easier and also be able to pinpoint where people are at across the map without using a UAV. Well, not really across the map, but from a distance that is pretty substantial. This is gonna allow you to get the jump on players and position yourself. And obviously, positioning is key in this Call of Duty because the time to kill is slower. Now, again, everything under here is me pretty much the same here. I have my audio volume turned all the way up so i can hear footsteps and gunfire but again everything else is going to be the same i don't really recommend changing any of these i have some of these settings specifically set up for recording so i don't have to hear you know sometimes unnecessary things in game chat but the most important thing is making sure you're playing on headphones based boost as well as that volume turned all the way up and then finally, we do have the interface settings. There is some things you should definitely change under this category if you have not already. The most important thing is gonna be making sure your mini map is gonna be set up to square. Sometimes the game does boot up with this set at round. Round is definitely a horrible idea because not only is square a lot easier to read and interpret, let me know down in the comment section if you want to have a video released where I kind of explain how to read and interpret the mini map, but you're also going to see a bigger kind of section of the mini map. You're going to be able to figure out where people are at a lot easier as well. So I recommend you guys making this change to square and obviously have mini map rotation turned on. These are going to be the best settings under the interface category. These are going to be humongous changes that you should definitely do if you have not done it already. These are some simple changes that are gonna allow you to transform your gameplay by just making a simple setting switch. And these are gonna be the best setting you should rock here in Modern Warfare 3. Now, under the gameplay and aiming settings, these, again, are gonna be what is gonna be really important to change. I recommend playing with the sensitivity window four to six. Make sure you guys bump down your ADS sensitivity multiplayer to 0.65, and make sure you're playing on dynamic with Black Ops. You're gonna see a tremendous change immediately and if this video does help you guys out, let me know down in the comment section. And as always, drop a like on the vid, subscribe to the channel, turn on those post notifications, be in your boy ears, and I'm going to catch you guys the next one. Hopefully this helps you guys out. Deuces.